नमस्कार साथियों टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द आई एस इंटरव्यू थिंग एंड मोस्ट ऑफ यू हु आर लाइकली टू अटेंड द आई एस इंटरव्यू और हु होप टू अटेंड आई एस इंटरव्यू इन द फ्यूचर मस्ट वॉच दिस वीडियो केयरफुली यूजली द आई एस इंटरव्यू इज हेल्ड फॉर basically four category of services one is the indian administrative service the other is the indian foreign service the indian police service and the central services group a and group b and all those candidates who are invited for the interview they must keep their documents absolutely ready to be submitted to the commission before the interview and those who are claiming reservation benefits or any kind of relaxation they have to be very careful because they have to produce certificates which are made before the you know closing date for the preliminary examination so you must check up that all the certificates that you are going to submit to the commission for reservation or any relaxation are in order and finally all the documents about preferences etc they a preference of services etc they have to be you know online uploaded and those who will not be giving their preferences they shall not be you know uh, consider for any allotments uh, uh, to the services so this is very important and before you uh, you know decide to rush to delhi or go to upsc for interview all these things should be uh, taken into consideration now coming to the main thing <clears throat> as soon as the written examination is declared of the main examination uh, we have the final uh, you know bout and that is the viva voc or the interview which is the last leg of the civil services examination what i have seen is is that normally it is the number of candidates which is almost twice the number of posts so you sh- you should know the number of posts and you should can anticipate how many candidates will be uh, you know invited for the interview and obviously you know that 50% will be selected and 50% will have to wait for the next year uh, the the good thing about the interview is that there is no qualifying marks for the interview and even if you get a zero in the interview and you have good marks in the written examination then you are selected so that should not be a very minimum qualifying marks they are not to be worried at all but you would must try to uh, give a good performance in the interview so that your rank gets uh, you know improved however the board has ah the one important thing which you should keep in mind that whatever marks you have obtained in the theory papers written examination is main examination optionals and uh, gs they are not disclosed to the interview board members and therefore they do not know what is your position in, through the uh, uh, written examination uh, uh, they have only your academic profile before them and therefore they can ask questions based on your academic profile and the options that you have taken or they can ask any question which they think like asking now today what i am going to do is to give you some sense of the entire this drama which i call interview or viva voc which we call interview or viva viva voc the first my first advice to you would be that most of the candidates as soon as they clear the main examination they get into panic and the panic is of many varieties many kinds they do not know how to prepare for the viva how to prepare for the interview they are worried about their dress they are worried about what how to prepare what to read uh, and they are almost you know confused as to how to go about uh, upsc before their uh, interview so all those worries you know they are uh genuine but you should understand that you should not worry much about the interview and some of the candidates they are also worried about which board they are going to face you obviously nobody can tell you that to which board you are going to face but normally people are worried candidates are worried forget about all those things there are 
some candidates who are very conscious about the dress they will go for new dresses new shoes new everything no i my advice would be that you just wear a normal dress that is with you and which you have already had used several times so that you can feel normal and you know sometimes we try to be very uh, you know uh, showy or we are very ornamental dresses no that is not let dress not be a subject of discussion in the interview board that is very important secondly you are not sure what kind of questions the interviewers will ask and therefore you start running from pillar to post asking people what kind of a questions your seniors uh, or others who have uh, qualified earlier you are running to them what kind of questions of course all those things you have already you know uh, inquired when you were preparing for the ias examination earlier but once the election elect, once the results of the main examinations are disclosed and you are invited for the uh, interview you are not supposed to run from the pillar pillar to post and just be cool and uh, of course many people indulge into some readings reading fresh books novels this and that you are not supposed to read anything between your uh, main examination and the interview uh, uh, just be relaxed and some people even rush to delhi to attend several mock interviews and doesn't you know uh, work and they you in fact lose your originality so my advice would be relax once you have received a letter of invitation from the usc for the interview just relax and focus on whatever knowledge you have gathered from your childhood try to recollect what you know and try to see that what are your Uh, existing knowledge uh, uh, you know uh, treasure so that is very important because you have been virtually preparing for the childhood for this day for the interview and nothing is special is required to be prepared this you will certainly realize when you go to the interview board that nothing that you read between the main examination and the interview works it doesn't work at all of course you should continue to read the newspaper the magazine in a relaxed manner watch the tv for the current affairs programs and other things of your interest your hobbies your whatever <coughs> is there but that should be a routine uh, reading and routine watching kind of a things of course you you try to revise your fundamentals uh, of the optionals of course <coughs> since you have taken optional as a, a subject that can uh, the, the the questions can be framed on the optionals so these things you have to take keep in mind and also tries to anticipate expected and unexpected questions from the interviewer like why you want to join ias this is a very very uh, normal kind of a question why you want to join ias so there has to be some standard answer but then try to be genuine about because everybody would be talking the same thing the social service this national service there are so many ways to do that but try to be honest in your uh, responses and whatever you 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 know express you have to have a command over your language always try to be uh, very clear that you speak in a language which uh, you know you are comfortable with and politely <coughs> you know uh, are you Uh, politely put your viewpoint in a cool calculated rational and brief manner and this is very important why brevity is so important because sometimes many candidates they try to be unnecessary lengthy giving lengthy answers and lengthy answers are answers which are uh, which can put you in trouble and there they can there can be lot of traps in the lengthy answers so try to be as brief as you can but try to be give try to give complete answer but brief answer because the board is the interview board is not going to judge your academic credential that is already proved you have done your ba you have done your ma some of you, you might have done your higher studies phd etc also but uh, the board is not interested you are not going to be recruited for the uh, professor's job you are going to be recruited for the administrator's job and therefore they are going to test your mental ability, ability mental caliber intellectual qualities mental alertness critical power of assimilation clear logical exposition balance of judgment and variety of depth of interest ability of social 
cohesion, leadership, you know, qualities, intellectual and moral integrity, etc. That they are going to, you know, uh, check uh, in the interview and not any academic scholarship that you might uh, uh, carry forward or carry along. <coughs> Some things which you must keep in mind is that you reach Delhi, the UPSC, I mean, uh, reach Delhi with, where the UPSC is a day before the interview so that there is no hurry. Duties to reach the UPSC office well in time so that there is no rush and get settled over there. Maybe an hour before the interview would be very fine because you will be comfortable, you will get settled in the environment of the UPSC, etc. Look, try to look cool and happy and no, there should not be any nervousness and anxiety because, you know, of course, it is true that uh, it's very difficult to say that don't be nervous and don't be <coughs> anxious. Most of the candidates are that whether they will be selected or not, but then nervousness and anxiety can only harm you. It will not add up to your, uh, you know, uh, any positive things to your personality and interview. It can only harm you and therefore try to be relaxed. Think that whatever will happen, I will perform my best and then that's fine. So <clears throat> keep normal interaction with your fellow candidates who are also invited there. Just keep talking to them. Don't sit in a very, you know, in your introvert uh, manner. Uh, be just relax and be on a conversation mode with other fellow uh, candidates so that uh, that 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 habit of interaction and talking and uh, your expression gets uh, you know absolutely normal by the time you are invited for the uh, interview by the <coughs> chairman of the board so when as soon as your name is called and you are invited enter the room with permission always take permission from the chairman and uh, greet the chairman and of course other members of the board and take your chair with due permission. Normally <coughs> they will offer you chair but sometimes the board tests your patience and also the nervousness by deliberately ignoring you and delaying offering you a chair. And if you understand this, that wait if, wait for a while, but if you feel that they are deliberately trying to ignore you and test your nervousness, then you can <coughs> intervene and eventually wait for a while and then seek permission to sit down. And of course, when you, they are offered, they have offered you a chair or then when you have uh, requested for, to sit down, then of course you can thank the board for giving you permission. And when you are sitting on the chair, sometimes the, there is a habit that uh, you give an impression that you are very nervous and sit on the edge of the chair, just relaxed and sit uh, your, uh, your back, uh, you know, tied to the backs, back uh, seat of the chair. So that they, and don't don't uh, you know uh, cross-legged sitting is not allowed. Don't cross your legs. Of course, you can ha keep your hands on your lap and uh, don't lean on the same. Sometimes candidates lean like this on the table. Don't do that. Sit in a relaxed manner and don't uh, sit cross-legged. Other things you have to understand that when the interview starts, <coughs> that interview is not a cross-examination like a criminal, ex a police examining a criminal. That's not the uh, nature of uh, IAS interview. They are very, you know, uh, purposive, directed, and in a conversational mode, uh, so that they it can reveal your internal qualities. So always maintain a pleasant disposition and always uh, be alert. Uh, not giving any sign of nervousness and anxiety. For example, if you are offered a glass of water, most of the candidates would probably say out of nervousness or maybe uh, for other consideration, no. No, if you are asked a glass of water and if you feel like most of the candidates who by that time would probably, uh, it will be better if you take a glass of water and I'll just thank them for the water that they offer. Sometimes they would be, they would be served coffee and you are also uh, invited to join the coffee group. Uh, then don't say no, just say I'll be grateful and uh, to have a, this opportunity of drinking coffee with you. So just accept it and that also shows your socializing skill, you know, that you can, you can can be comfortable in the company of strangers because if all the three all the members are drinking coffee and you are not drinking coffee probably you will you will feel out of place so be integrated to the board and thank the board for them the next very important thing is that most of the candidates are very very quick in answering questions of course that is good but that gives an impression that you have perhaps not understood the question properly so let them ask a question and give some consideration, some pause should be there. 
you give some seconds to think over the question, what the question is, and then you probably start giving the answer. And uh, it should not be absolutely a spontaneous thing that they have asked question and you start answering. And in the meanwhile, try to recover and try to understand the essence of the question. What is the real question? What is being asked actually? For, the, for that, you give yourself a few seconds to think over and then in a very polished manner, in a very decent language, polite language, cool language, brief language, sophisticated language, try to uh, present your answer to the uh, board <coughs> or the member. Sometimes you can be led into some kind of a controversial, you know, conversation because your answers might lead to other questions. And then uh, it can be uh, maybe at, you might be at the loggerheads or might be at, there might be a difference of opinion with the, the, the interview board member. So in such cases, don't feel embarrassed. Some, sometimes they are deliberately trying to engage you into this kind of a controversial con conversation. The, the best part is that uh, when there is a volley of questions and there is some kind of a disagreement, Always be polite, but try to differ and take a stand. Because if you keep on shifting a stand according to the convenience of the situation, then that is a weak part of your personality. They are trying to test whether you are consistent and consistent logically. So be polite, be consistent, be logical and hold on to your uh, intellectual uh, you know, position. That also shows your intellectual integrity. But sometimes <clears throat> you can also appreciate the disagreement and, uh, you know, even while sticking to your viewpoint, you can appreciate the, uh, the, the pointers of the interview board member. And if you see really that there is a logic and there is a convincing point in the, uh, in the arguments of the member of the board, then you can thank them and for correcting yourself. And then you can be, I mean, I mean these are very normal conversational styles that we normally follow in day-to-day -day life, that we try to argue, we try to rationally put our point of view, but then we, if we understand that no, the other party has a better point, then we politely accept it and thank him for correcting yourself correcting us. <clears throat> also, do not try to get irritated nor annoyed or nor you try to irritate the members of the board because you see, being a disagreement is one thing but giving an annoying reply, an irritating reply is bad because ultimately you are in the board and you are there to get some marks for your selection which will either get you into IAS or maybe get you out of the entire uh, team which finally gets selected. So you have to be very, 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 very polished. And in spite of the fact that there are sometimes very, very nasty questions, uh, you have to be, you have to understand that all that is a drama, a, a, a structured drama in which you have to be a very, very smart player and you have to understand that sometimes they might be trying to unnecessarily provoke you and don't be provoked, take a vow that I will not get provoked in the interview uh, at all and you can disagree, you can differ, but always be very polite and decent. That is very, very important. In the gravest of circumstances, don't be provoked. Because all provocation is deliberate drama. Always keep maintain, always maintain your composure, always keep smiling, uh, give due respect to all the members, but don't get provoked. Don't give, give an impression that you are feeling irritated or you are feeling annoyed. Sometimes the member ignore you and enter into a conversation on a particular point <coughs> amongst themselves. When they are doing so, never try to intervene in their discussion unless you are invited to uh, express your viewpoint on that issue. So when the members are talking or when the members are discussing a particular point, they are trying to they, they are trying to uh, uh, provoke you into uh, some kind of interventional intervention in that entire deliberation. Keep yourself away from that unless you are uh, invited to give your viewpoint. And finally, that if you don't know the answer of a question, then please politely say that, sir, I am sorry, I don't know. Apologize for your ignorance. There is no wrong 
in that and don't feel embarrassed at all because nobody in the world can answer each and every question. So if a couple of questions which you don't know or which you can't answer, just uh, stay away and apologize for your ignorance on that. And of course, sometimes <clears throat> your ignorance can be mixed with a humor uh, and uh, humor, you know, is something which the board very much appreciate because sometimes very difficult situations uh, you might win the heart of the opposition by your humor if, even if you don't uh, wish to answer uh, even if you don't wish to do the work of the person who has come to you as ad administrative officers but in doing this never cross the limits of the decency that is very important and finally uh, one very important tip is that when the interview starts always try to mold the interview board towards the area of your specialization or expertise. Initially try to use some words or try to do something so that the attention of the board members uh, is drawn to your area, your expertise, your experience, etc. And there you can excel of course. And uh, <clears throat> if the members enlighten you still, because members are very, very learned and very, very experienced people. So if they still enlighten you on something or, uh, or help you attain the clarity, certainly you can always thank them. And when the interview is over, then you can leave the board with a sense of confidence. Do not be shaky. That is also very important. When you are leaving the interview, body language should be as if you are confident of victory and that, that is watched very carefully by the members of the board. And when you are re leaving, the wish each and every member, the chairman, and each and every member of the board before you uh, leave. And finally, when you are out of the room, you are asked to write a short resume of what has gone, interact, what kind of interaction has gone and what is your take on the entire deliberation uh, during that 30-40 uh, minutes so that you can write in a simple and lucid language uh, and then just go away and enjoy because uh, then of course you have done your job and it is the only time will tell with her uh, how the things have gone for you and hopefully I wish that uh, you come out successfully even in the interview board. So uh, these are some brief uh, tips uh, for you and I wish all those who are appearing in the IAS interview uh, a grand success. Thank you very much.